Up until today, all of the previous smart home protocols that we've looked at have all been around for a very long time, since at least the early 2000s, which in tech years is a lifetime. But today comes the turn of a new challenger. Welcome to Smart Home Protocols, where today we are taking a look at Thread. Thread is a wireless mesh networking technology developed by the Thread Group. Thread was actually announced all the way back in 2014, but has remained relatively unheard of until roughly the last two years or so, when Apple joined the Thread Group Alliance and launched their first Thread product with the HomePod Mini back in 2020. Thread operates on the 2.4 GHz radio frequency space and has a strong focus on Internet of Things products with its low power, mesh networking and self-healing capabilities. If you've been following along with previous videos in the series, that sounds pretty familiar to some other technologies that we've looked at, right? But there are some key differences. In a thread network, there are two different types of devices that you need to know about, a full thread device and a minimal thread device. These are further broken down into a couple of subtypes, but let's keep things simple for now. A full thread device always has its radio on and is constantly listening and participating in the thread network, while a minimal thread device exists to support and allow for low power devices. Full thread devices are the most functional and support the most roles in a network, and minimal thread devices support less roles. Where it gets a little confusing is that there are additional sub roles that devices can play in a thread network. So let's take a look at some of the most important ones. One of the most important roles is called a router, which can be played by a full thread device. The router role forwards packets for network devices, allows other devices to join the thread network securely, and essentially forms the core mesh of thread. You can and likely will have many routers in a thread network, since routers can upgrade and downgrade their role to maintain the optimal amount of between 16 and 23 for a network. When a router downgrades itself, it becomes a read or router eligible end device. This is a role assumed by devices that are capable of becoming routers, but due to the current network conditions are not currently selected to be one. This upgrading and downgrading of routers is decided by our third role, the leader. The leader is an elected role of one router in a thread network and it decides when to upgrade and downgrade routers. And since there can only be one leader, if that leader fails, then another router is dynamically selected to take over. And then we have our final main role, the border router. The border router is a device that can forward information between a thread network and a non-thread network like your home network so that you can interact with your thread devices from your phone. Any device can be a border router so long as it has the necessary hardware and there can be many border routers in a single thread network. There are a few other roles that we haven't covered but the last one I wanted to talk about is called the sleepy end device and this is a role played by the minimal thread device and it allows for thread devices to turn their radio off during idle periods waking up periodically to communicate with their parent router. And this role would generally be reserved and used on battery operated devices. So that was quite a lot of technical information about Thread. So let's talk about some of the positives and negatives when it comes to using Thread in your smart home. The first great benefit with Thread is that it's highly resilient with no single failure point. If you watch the Zigbee video in this series, You'll remember that we talked about the Zigbee coordinator being a potential failure point for a Zigbee network. Since if the coordinator goes offline, then the Zigbee network is dead in the water. With Thread, that isn't an issue because as we spoke about, you can have many routers in a network. You can also have many border routers in a network. And although there is only one leader, if this leader fails, then the network can dynamically elect another leader as required. Not to mention that thread devices can self-establish a network on their own and child devices will automatically manage their connections to routers to maintain the strongest link. Another big advantage of thread is that it's IPv6 addressable. That means that devices can talk directly to the internet or each other by using the widely adopted standard of internet protocol or IP. That in turn means that thread devices will be able to communicate with other thread devices 
without having to worry about speaking another brand's specific language, which should be good for interoperability. Battery life is also a strong point for Thread, since those minimal Thread devices have the ability to turn off their radio when not in use and sleep, helping to really preserve those battery lives and allowing battery operated devices to last for years on a single battery. I also like Thread's simplicity. Now, I know we talked a lot about different roles and routers and border routers and lots of other technical things, but the truth is that as a consumer, you don't need to know about any of that or what it does or what it even means. And all of those resiliency features mentioned previously are being taken care of for you by the Thread network without you having to do anything. The network dynamically manages itself and just does all of its healing and optimization behind the scenes. Just like Z-Wave, Thread also has a certification process that certifies that a device has conformed to the Thread specification and the product is interoperable with other Thread certified devices. This allows manufacturers to display the Thread certified logo on the product box and should give you peace of mind that your device will be compatible with other Thread devices. How this actually pans out in practice remains to be seen as of yet, since Thread is still very much in its infancy, with only a very limited number of devices out there actually using it. So we don't have enough data to say for certain just yet, although Thread is certainly gaining adoption and more and more devices are now finally starting to show up. Finally, Thread devices should also be cheap to implement, at least from a hardware point of view. Thread uses the 802.15.4 standard, the exact same standard that Zigbee does, which has been around for a while and so hardware should in theory be the same cost as Zigbee. Now, I mention hardware only because as we talked about the certification process, there is of course a membership fee for joining the Thread group and going through that process. But again, since there isn't a huge amount of devices to choose from at the moment, it's difficult to say how that will actually affect the price. Latency should also be improved with Thread too. There is only one really good report that I can find so far from Silicon Labs, but they benchmarked Thread against Zigbee and Bluetooth and found that Thread usually performed the best with Zigbee a close second. In the real world, it may be difficult to actually notice the difference between Zigbee and Thread, but hey, faster response time and less variation in those response times is always better and so I welcome this improved latency. Finally, I did want to touch on throughput, range and interference. Throughput for Thread is around 250 kilobits per second, which is the exact same as Zigbee, so that does mean that it's perfectly fine for use with sensors and devices, but it's not going to be suitable for certain applications like video. Range is also quoted at 30 meters, same as Zigbee's. Again, that's more likely to be less in the real world, but because of the mesh and self-healing capabilities that we talked about earlier, you should be able to get good coverage throughout your house. Interference may be a potential issue for Thread 2 since it uses the same 2.4 GHz frequency that we are used to seeing in many other popular protocols, although they do use what's called a spread spectrum technology to provide immunity against interference. So that is everything you need to know about the smart home protocol called Thread. And to me, Thread feels like a nice generational improvement upon Zigbee, while also taking some good stuff from Z-Wave 2. It seems to solve the single failure point that Zigbee has with its coordinator, whilst aiming to be interoperable like Z-Wave is. But does that mean that you need to go out and throw all of your Zigbee and Z-Wave stuff in the bin just because Thread is coming? Of course not. I think we can all be a bit guilty of sometimes seeing something new and shiny and thinking that that renders all of our old stuff useless. If you're currently happy with your Zigbee and Z-Wave products, there is no reason to not continue to keep using those devices and even starting to run Thread in parallel alongside it as more and more Thread devices come out that you are interested in. If you're starting out with a brand new smart home, you may not want to go too heavily invested into Zigbee or Z-Wave at this exact moment in time, since we are starting to see announcements for Thread products coming in the second half of 2022. So you may want to wait and see how that actually plays out. Speaking of playing out, in the next video in this series, we are going to be taking a look at an upcoming standard that isn't a protocol called Matter. Yeah, I'll explain what all of that means in the next video, 
But other than that, that is going to do it for me. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.